All right, everybody, so let's get started. We're a few minutes past the hour, so I'd like to welcome you all today and thank you for joining us for uh, today's webinar. We're doing this sort of case study style webinar uh, with, with a company called Teridian, uh, who may have joined us on the line as well. Uh, today, we're gonna, our topic is, or the title of our webinar is, uh, Deliver Applications Up to 20 Times Faster. In today's uh, webinar, we're gonna show you how uh, Teridian leverages NS1 to uh, help make that happen. I'm joined here today with uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Sullivan from NS1. He is the co-founder and SDP of operations, and he hails from New York City. And Elad Wellner, who is the director of customer success at Teridian, and he is in Israel. Um, today's agenda, we're gonna do a brief intro of NS1, uh, an introduction to Teridian, and then we'll cover a case study on NS1 plus Teridian and how the two solutions combine to form uh, an excellent application delivery uh, solution. And then we're going to follow that up with uh, Elod doing a demo of uh, live demo of NS1 and Teridian so that you can see actual uh, real life performance statistics and numbers uh, here on the webinar today. So first, Jonathan, um, give me a little background on NS1, uh, why the company was founded, and, and what it does. Sure. So hi everyone, uh, John Sullivan here. Um, so we we're all the, the co-founders of NS1, uh, all hail from the uh, the hosting space. Um, got our backgrounds building mission critical um, application and hosting infrastructure at a company here in New York City called Voxel, where we did uh, bare metal as a service. Uh, had an early public cloud offering uh, at the time uh, when uh, you know before OpenStack and, and CloudStack and all those cool um, suites existed. Um, also built a content delivery network and service of. Um, uh, as a value add to the to the platform, uh, and so in those days we actually built. Uh, you couldn't go buy managed DNS, and we we built our own platform uh, based on Power DNS. And uh, that company was acquired by Internet uh, a few years ago. Um, and then we uh, we took a step back and, and thought about what was next. And um, you know there had been an explosion um, in um, uh, sort of uh, hardware vendors or cloud vendors and and the ability to deploy applications uh, into multiple locations was no longer an afterthought. It was becoming kind of um, in the norm thanks to the pervasiveness of providers like Amazon and DigitalOcean and, and SliceHost and you know, I can go on. The other thing that was happening was the tools to, to manage these applications were getting a lot better um, databases with eventual consistency and uh, scale out databases like, like Mongo were solving a lot of the problems at the data layer. Um, you know, CDNs had solved uh, a lot of the static delivery um, pushing that to the edge edges a while ago, uh, but now the application was really catching up. And you know, today you can go and um, you know build or just download a, a simple web framework, um, push a couple of buttons, and uh, have a, a VM on DigitalOcean in five markets with a distributed application. Um, and so then comes the next question: How do you get the right eyeballs to the right data center? Um, we looked around, saw that nobody was really addressing that question. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of the, the best in breed technologies out there uh, were making estimates, um, you know, kind of like GPS systems 10 years ago, uh, where they would send you to the closest uh, data center and, you know, make, maybe make sure that the data center was up. Um, we thought we could do significantly better. And so the platform that we've built um, kind of gives you, hooks into your application and pulls telemetry from your load balancers, um, from your F5s, from your ELBs, from whatever, um, HA proxy, open source. It pulls in external metrics uh, from systems like Boundary or Catchpoint and New Relic, um, and it also uses uh, RUM and latency telemetry to, um, to in real time, route around uh, problems on the internet, fiber cuts, uh, congestion, that sort of stuff, and um, and really kind of closes the loop on, uh, on on performance and giving you giving our clients complete awareness into what's going on in their application and on the internet at large. Yeah, I think it's important to point out too that the company's gotten some. Uh, recent funding by two heavyweights in the in the space, Flybridge Capital Partners and Sigma Prime. So, this is something that really is you know taking traction as far as reinventing the internet. And I think it's a, it's a very exciting exciting time for the company. Over the past year, um, we've added some interesting logos here, and we talked a little bit about integrations as well. And we've got some integration partners up here, but these are some pretty strong names: Catchpoint, Yelp, Teridian, obviously, Imgur, Turbobytes, Algolia, Greenhouse, companies ranging from household names like Yelp to, to new startups, what, what do these guys all have in common that, that drives them to NS1? Uh, I think, you know, performance is an overly used term, uh, but, you know, the early adopters of our platform, uh, particularly like the ad techs that you see here, uh, PulsePoint, Collective, 
um, uh, Integral or Ignition One, all of these are industries who value um, or who understand the value of milliseconds, not even seconds. And so they are early adopters of technology that can make a meaningful difference in how effectively they can route users to their data centers because that translates directly to money. Um, you know, similar with uh, some of the more household names like um, you know Yelp and Imager and some others, big properties um, that, you, that you don't see on here uh, but show up in the Alexa Top 100. Um, you know, these are companies and, uh, and assets and, uh, and client-facing uh, properties who also understand that, um, you know, if, if you can't get to their website um, or if you, if you add a second to page loads, uh, you know, your bounce rates increase by 20% or something like that. Um, and so even, you know, some of these titans like Yelp and Imager understand um, that, uh, you know, if somebody comes along with a faster, easier-to-use uh, widget that provides better quality of service, um, you know, that's, uh, it's going to hurt their business. And so NS1 is in DNS as the entry point into all of these companies' uh, infrastructure. Uh, it's mission critical, but it's also a great place to make an intelligent routing decision um, that can have a huge effect on, uh, on application performance, particularly when you combine that with another intelligent system uh, like Teridian's to optimize after that initial connection. Yeah. And on the back side of that, too, the performance that, with like integration partners, for instance, that the platform provides as an API-focused platform, what does that mean for like the DevOps folks on the internal side, their mm -hmm. ability to, to rapidly spin up environments and, and integrate this more broadly across their entire organization? Yeah, the, the vast majority of the logos that you see here aren't just using us for, um, you know, the, uh, the features in the advanced routing. Um, we're an API-first stack, so everything that you can do in our portal and our product can be done programmatically. Um, Yelp went and built a Terraform integration that's fantastic, um, uh, and uh, I think a Go client as well. We've got Ansible modules and uh, Python and PHP toolkits, and then we've all we've got all these third-party integration partners like uh, you know I mentioned Catchpoint or Boundary and New Relic earlier. Um, we've got ways of getting data in and out of the system, so that it really becomes this sort of big brain in the cloud that clients can rely on, and uh, and kind of build their application logic into our stack, so we distribute it and make a decision for them with their business rules um, in a very seamless and integrated way so that, uh, you know, once they set this stuff up, uh, it's really, really easy to manage on an ongoing basis, mm -hmm. uh, to modify, to make it their own, and to, to A-B test changes. Absolutely. So let's, let's go into a little bit. This graphic shows, like, sort of, like, what people have historically thought of DNS as being is basically this phone directory for the... Uh, for the internet. Mm -hmm. Type in cnn.com and boom, it points you to any number of IP that are sort of preset. What's the difference between how DNS was used before and how DNS is being leveraged today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 10 years ago, applications for the most part were monolithic and they lived in one data center or if you were really fancy or, or maybe a bank, uh, you owned the hardware and, uh, and you had a secondary one and some sort of, uh, you know, acceptable uh, mean time to fail over uh, disaster recovery metrics. That's all changed, obviously, um, as people have kind of realized that the closer you can get your content to the end users, um, because of restrictions of physics and the speed of light in, the, in fiber optic cables and, and switching, um, you know, the better quality of experience you can give your, your users. Geography is only one part of that equation, though, and so, um, you know, DNS has always been a database to translate those names into IP addresses, and uh, that little arrow between DNS request and answer there's a whole slew of interesting stuff that can happen in there to make sure that the one IP address you give back to your end user is optimized. And so the way we've thought about it in NS1, um, you know, rather than creating kind of proprietary record types that, that do these kinds of uh, advanced load balancing or, or, tra or, or up-down health checking, um, we have little uh, filters, which you can think of as programs, that you can string together to, um, you know, to make a, a routing algorithm that gets attached to a DNS record um, that does exactly what your business requirements uh, require. And so on the bottom, you see those three um, uh, server metrics things uh, that are feeding up. That's all telemetry we are sucking in about um, either the Internet or our customer's infrastructure or their actual users and um, handsets. Um, and then when we get a request, we go through all these different filters, and what comes out the other end is the optimally computed answer. And so this is an actual filter chain uh, that is used by one of our ad tech companies who has a big colo deployment on the East Coast and the West Coast. And they also have um, uh, Amazon environments uh, on both coasts. And so we will geolocate the user to the closest coast. Um, then we'll look at our Pulsar data to see if we have um, some RUM, some latency data, so we can make 
uh, you know, go beyond geo and use actual telemetry and say, for this user on this ISP, for users on Verizon FiOS in Brooklyn, uh, right now we should actually send the user to California because there's a fiber cut that's uh, affecting service. Next, we can look at uh, connection counts on their uh, their A10 load balancers, um, and then finally, once we get them to the region, you know, east, US, east, or US, west, that's going to give them the best performance. We can sticky. 99% um, of their users to the colo environment and 1% to Amazon to make sure those caches stay warm. And then we can programmatically ratchet up that uh, the amount we're sending to Amazon in the event that they get a big ad buy or, uh, or need to distribute that traffic intelligently. Mm -hmm. And you can use this, and we'll go into the, the, the filter chain as well when we do the demo, but you can customize these filter chains to, to cover a number of use cases, whether you're trying to uh, eliminate or reduce latency, jitter, packet loss, whatever those, um, those use cases are that individual companies have. Yeah, and we've had companies come back and actually, um, you know, show us use cases that we didn't really think were possible, combining these in interesting ways. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, uh, doing suboptimal performance just to see how their uh, their uh, their site handles on load. Basically, we look at the latency data and sort in reverse. Um, so we send uh, you know their catch point or their Gomez in instance to the worst performing you node know, just to see how that perform uh, you know affects application uh, delivery. So lots of uh, uh, cool and interesting ways to to combine these. And of course, we introduced this, this product called Pulsar, which we kind of speak about this as extending the application to the extreme edge. Uh, can you touch a little bit on Pulsar uh, and what that product line uh, does in addition to the uh, DNS product? It's mm -hmm. more of a traffic management solution. Right, exactly. Yeah, so Pulsar is a, a latency-based routing engine, or actually it, it, it's, um, it's sort of telemetry agnostic. Um, so we, uh, we we can collect data using a JavaScript tag, or customers uh, have APIs, so they can um, embed um, this technology in their iPhone or Android applications, uh, or or game downloaders, um, uh, so that they can ship with actual telemetry. So when we start to, um, you know, when we think about writing a user, we're looking at a map that looks like you know what you've seen from Google Maps or or you know every modern GPS where you've got actual um, traffic measurements, and we start to use that to make the uh, the DNS decision uh, instead of sort of estimating using geography. And I know that Elon has a similar story for what they do once we help them reach the uh, the pop. Um, That's exactly right. Product. And so coupling those two together, I think we'll see a nice a nice story here of how these things can work together. Yep. I, I mean, I think you know, five or ten years from now, you'll see uh, all of, a bunch of companies who are not NS1 and Teridian scrambling to kind of retrofit this technology into their existing offerings, which for technical reasons is probably not going to be possible, but anybody building this kind of stuff today is absolutely going to be, uh, you know, taking this approach. And five to ten years from now, this will this will be the norm for how applications are delivered. And what's also unique, unique I think, with the company, uh, NS1's platform is really converging three different components, disparate components of the marketplace today, which is the managed DNS, the private DNS, or the enterprise side, internal DNS, along with the traffic management component through our Pulsar product. And those, bringing those three together into a single platform, a single solution, obviously brings a lot of efficiency to the marketplace uh, and sort of changes the, uh, the landscape, if you will, of how people have viewed DNS traditionally as a, a, a tool or some type of protocol, and now it's more or less can be deployed as a platform approach to uh, application optimization and also enterprise IP ops, mm -hmm. right? Um, a few differentiators that kind of separate us, and then we'll move on to uh, uh, a lot in Teridian, uh, and they'll, they'll do a little introduction, introduction to their company. Uh, we are a ground-up proprietary stack. Uh, we're servicing production uh, traffic for several years now, and obviously, as you can see with the logos, we have some very significant names, as John mentioned. Uh, the product is based upon six-plus years of working in a large global CDN environment and seeing the challenge that are challenges that they faced, and then, um, you know, jumping out of Box Hill Internet after the acquisition and, and forming NS1. Uh, the API-first architecture, I know we talked about that a lot, but if, if, if you really look at what developers are looking for, API-first architecture gives them so many more tools. We just kind of happen to have a front end that's really nice, too, uh, but a lot of folks really like to use that API-first architecture. And, of course, our data feeds, those are best in class. We're able to uh, really leverage infrastructure and network telemetry. Uh, including the metrics from uh, direct eyeballs on the network and real time at the extreme edge. And finally, filter chain. Our filter chain technology real, really allows us to uh, provide a very robust mix and match routing uh, uh, algorithm set that organizations can use for their specific use case. Uh, 
Now let's uh, Alad, we'll bring you in here. Um, give you a little, let you do a little introduction for or about Ceridian. Um, can you hear us okay, Alad? Yeah, so excellent. Yeah, yeah. So hi everybody. My name is Alad. I'm the director uh, director of customer success in Ceridian. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about Ceridian, and after that we will show the demo uh, that we, how we are using NS1. So. Ceridion was founded about two years ago. Our headquarters are in San Francisco and our engineering team is in Tel Aviv. And we have total founders of about $20 million, needed by Innovate, JVP, and Magma. Uh, our product is generally available for the last uh, eight months. Um, can we go over to the next slide, please? Uh, sure. Okay, so what is Ceridion? Ceridion is basically a new approach for the content delivery market. We have a non-caching, bi-directional, and IP-optimized network. Uh, why do you need us and, and why do you need this solution? Uh, because today, most of the content is dynamic. The users are suffering from poor performance over the regular internet. Uh, if we go over to the next slide, we can show you how we do it. Sorry. Okay. There you go. Uh, so basically, yeah, so basically, what we did is we built an overlay network above the regular internet. Uh, this network is built from a software router that we have developed. Uh, these routers are deployed on multiple cloud providers all over the world. Uh, on top of these routers, uh, we have a management system which decides what would be the best route uh, from the end user to the content provider. Okay, so you can see on the slide that what we are doing basically is that we determine what is the best path with a network and other networks that we build above the internet uh, using the routers. Uh, if we go to the next slide, okay. Yep. Okay. So a good a good analogy of Teridion would be calling it the wave of the internet. Okay. So same as wave does does for traffic, find the best route. Uh, we basically find the best path over the internet and the optimal route uh, is through routers. Um, so let's go please to the next slide. Um, and on this slide, you can see what we are actually doing. Okay, so as you can see, we literally fix the internet. Okay, you can see on the slide a measurement of a five megabyte file download uh, from uh, four of the top leading uh, file sharing providers. Um, so if we take a look on the company A at the left, previous to the video, a five megabyte file download took them an average of 11 uh, seconds. Okay, to download a, a five megabyte file took them about 11 seconds. Uh, when company A started to use Teridion, they reduced the download time to about 600 milliseconds. Okay, like half a second from 11, 11 seconds to half a second. Uh, and by that, they turned to be the best file sharing provider. Um, and next slide we can see, if, if you go over to the next slide. Okay. So the next slide is showing how, how can you uh, switch your traffic to Teridion. Okay, so basically all you need to do to become a Teridian customer is to make a simple DNS change, okay? And that is basically where NS1 is getting into the action. Um, and now let's talk about the case study. All right, so let's go a little bit of the case study. Uh, thank you for that a lot. And, and please feel free, uh, either to Jonathan or a lot, to, to jump in along the way. Um, we, we've obviously done the deployment here with uh, uh, Tridian, and, and basically the first point of access uh, that anybody's going to take to get into uh, Tridian network is going to be DNS. So uh, what we basically did with Tridian is basically provide our solution for them so that when folks are looking up uh, applications, they uh, find the, the highest performing uh, entry point on the internet and then access Tridian's overall network. The detailed case study here is available on our website, nsm1.com slash resources, you can find that in our resource section. Um, you can download that. I think we'll also post it on Tridian's website here eventually. Um, it gives a good in-depth in look at the challenges and solutions that we're going to touch on briefly, briefly today, and also some of the results. Uh, but the key challenges here is basically focusing on uh, the intelligence aspect where Tridian really needed actual intelligence to help decide uh, which endpoints to route users to across their global network. Uh, they needed precise routing. So they could uh, really use things such as EDNS client subnet and geofencing to uh, send users to 
the best possible location. Uh, configurability, they needed to use APIs, which would give them the ability to automate the uh, DNS record changes and add additional monitors as needed. And obviously, it's speed as well. Trading is all about speed. NS1 is about speed and performance. Um, Trading required near instant DNS change propagation time for APIs uh, to all DNS edge nodes throughout the world. And also uptime, where they required, the requirement there was that they needed a, a really strong layer on top of their infrastructure that could uh, control their global traffic and automatically readjust traffic on the fly. Uh, and the solution for them, obviously, was to go with NS1. And, and John, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the solutions that we provided for them? How, uh, you know, obviously we, we deploy our solution, they're leveraging our filter chain technology for intelligence. Uh, they're using EDNS client subnet support for precise routing. Obviously, they're using our APIs for configurability. Uh, we're routing them to the fastest pop. Anything to kind of add to that? Yeah, I think one thing that gets kind of lost in here is, um, and you'll, you'll see, we'll demystify this a bit, um, you know, when we look at their configura Teridian's configuration in our portal, um, is the ease with which uh, they were able to integrate um, you know, our, our APIs into their application. So when a new customer on their end signs up, they're automatically provisioned with the correct, uh, you know, set of filters and the, the correct uh, business rules. Um, it's really easy to do this stuff, um, you know, programmatically and with our portal. It's intuitive. Uh, and on the speed, it's not only, it's not only the delivery, um, you know, how quickly we can respond with an answer. That whole filter chain process executes in microseconds. Um, whereas DNS requests, you know, we are on the lowest end of the managed DNS providers in terms of milliseconds. Um, but also the speed when Teridian removes an IP from service or when we, when, uh, you know, we detect a failure with Pulsar or a routing problem, mm -hmm. those changes propagate in about 250 milliseconds globally. So it's as near instant as you can get uh, given until we invent a neutrino based network that can go through the planet Earth. <laughs> Right, right. And a lot, maybe you can speak a little bit to the next slide, which is actually from, from I think, your, your guys' side. This is, this is the end result. This is really what Teridian was able, is it able to, to produce. Um, and this is yeah, a real so, graphic. Yeah, so basically what we are seeing on, on this slide is a typical uh, Teridian customer uh, a traffic performance, okay? So on the top, on the red, you can see like a regular traffic over the internet when a customer is not using uh, Teridian. You can see that traffic is, is unpredictable, okay? And on the top, on the bottom, on the blue, uh, the blue green, you can see a regular uh, traffic of a customer in the region. You can see that using a, a NS1 a DNS and using a routing technology, uh, the customer is, is able to get a predictable uh, a traffic all over the world. And of course, on top of that, we are improving the customer. So this is again, a slide or a, a, a result of, of a five megabyte a five download. So you can see that, again, the results are, are, are very predictable. You can see that the, the line is almost straight. And, uh, and of course, on top of that, this is what, this is the main thing that we are doing. We, we also uh, improve the performance by fixing time. Yep. And, and this is, you know, you've got some, some very interesting customer logos as well. These are companies that are really interested in driving uh, performance. They've got uh, use cases where they're requiring the use of uh, heavy file uploads. Uh, what does it mean for an organization that is a, a household name as far as like sort of online file storage, for instance, to improve their performance by this much? What's the, what's the user experience uh, difference or improvements? So basically, yeah, so there are two main values for our customers. Okay, the, the first value is for our direct customer, uh, which when he's using Teridion, he, he knows that he can use only one data center. He don't need to, to use multiple data centers because he knows what, what the results of the upload or download will be. Okay, and, and, and the second effect is for our customer customers, okay, for the end user, uh, they, they have, a, again, they have a predictable uh, a workspace. Uh, they have fast upload and download, and of course, it improves their, their performance and their workflow and, and the, all the day to day working. Excellent. I think now is a good time, I think, to jump into uh, to the demo. I'm going to yeah. absolutely uh, I'm gonna pass this over to you. Um, this may take a second for okay. us to get this uh, correct. Let me see. Let me know if you've got the little pop up on your screen. This will be our next company's, uh, you know, WebEx demo software that works. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. 
Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So what we are seeing here is the Teridion portal, okay? Uh, what, this, is a, this is our customer portal, okay? And what you can see here is a network that we deployed for a demo customer, okay? And we, use, we are using for this customer this domain, okay? So if we will now go to the NS1 portal, okay, we will we'll take this domain customer-demo network.radion.net, we go to the NS1 portal, we see that this uh, domain is also here, okay? All the integration was made by an API, okay? No manhand uh, interviewer, uh, it's all, all, all was made by API, okay? Here you can see some configuration that we are using uh, with NS1. We are using low TTL, okay? Because our network is dynamic and, and we want to, and, and our software out there are often with change. We are changing the IP address, so we need to use low TPL, okay? Uh, here you can see some filters that we are using. The main filter that we are using is the GeoFence country, which let us geo-resolve the, the, the result uh, by the geolocation of our customer. Um, so once, once we created a domain, okay, the way we are working, we are creating a subdomain for each region uh, around the world, okay? So in this example, by using this domain, we have been automatically created using the API, a subdomain for Europe, for APAC, and for USA, okay? If we go into the configuration, uh, we can see, for example, that in the US, okay, we are, we are saying to the, to the DNS or to the end user, if you are coming from uh, California, Nevada, Oregon, uh, you will get, uh, you will be involved to this to this email, to this domain, okay? So what I'm going to show you now is, is like a quick demo and that you will see that it's actually working, okay? So I have this machine uh, which is located in California, okay? And I will take now this domain and we'll try to resolve it from California, okay? So as you can see, I got this subdomain of USA. That's because I'm located in California and because we have configured here that California will get this subdomain. Okay? And now if I go and try to resolve the same domain, for example, from Europe, from Frankfurt, okay? So you can see that now I get a different result, okay, based on my location. So from the US, I got this domain, the US domain, and from Europe, I got this domain, okay? So this eventually lets a user go to the nearest endpoint in our network. If I'm a user in Europe, I'm going to an endpoint, an endpoint with this IP in Europe, and if I'm in, in a user in, in the US, I will go to, to this IP in the US. Of course, that in, inside the US, we can use a, a geo-resolving by states, not like generally US. Uh, we are also using some other features of NS1 as longitude and latitude to, to have a region uh, inside China or inside India. And, and what is important to mention that all of the configuration is made uh, through the API, okay? Basically what we are doing, we are just configuring all our network parameters here and it's sending through an API all the parameters to the to NS1, okay? So we have no, uh, we have no touch in the NS1 system uh, beside the API, okay? So you can see that we have the domain here, okay? You can see that we have the same region with the same country, uh, all, is, all is being sent to, to the NS1, to the NS1 system. Mm -hmm. Jason, uh, feel free to elaborate yep. or add something to here. Yeah, so this really helps you automate the, the deployment process for your solution. And I think what you showed us there as well is that you're able to actually get really precise uh, geo-routing capabilities in place so that you can send people to uh, an optimized location. Now, I think you guys are also using some additional filters in there as well to, to account for some other, um, some other constraints as well. 
in this particular filter, yes, you're, you're, yep, you're focusing on is it up. Um, that's that's very important. Yeah, so this uh, filter chain, every every query, you know, and we saw um, you query from New York and then Frankfurt. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, we're monitoring all of your answers, and so if those are um, you know any of those are not up or unhealthy, those will automatically get removed right now. Um, and you can see that you've got some uh, some plugged in there. Um, and then I guess this is one of the particular answers where then you're able to distrib distribute the traffic within that region. Is that right? Yes, exactly. And, and actually, beside the filter, there's the, the another uh, very good use case for us uh, with NS1. Is, uh, uh, we are using NS1 to monitor our endpoints, our, our routers. Uh, we are using TCP probe that is monitoring our routers. And the NS1 is, is, is actually our front line of monitoring, okay? In case of, one, in case of a failure in one of our, of our routers, sometimes NS1 uh, uh, acts faster than our own internal monitoring system. Uh, so you can see here uh, on the right, you can see the status of the endpoint. Now it's up, but if it was down, it, was, it, was, it became red. It became red. Okay, the way we are using is we are using TCP pod method from NS1. Uh, that is testing the the port that that this endpoint, this machine is using to serve our customer. And that's distributed as well. So we have five monitoring zones around the world, and uh, there's some advanced policies behind that you can set through the portal, such that you know if we detect failure from if any one of those uh, detects a failure, we can pull the answer, or if it's a majority or all of them see it as down, uh, you know we can monitor for as frequently as every every second, although that's, that's a bit overkill for most use cases. And again, as soon as that monitor that you see there uh, on the right-hand side uh, detects some sort of failure, you know, that propagates instantly. And, um, you know, 250 milliseconds globally, um, the very next DNS response we, uh, or query we get um, will take that into account and, uh, and the answer will be removed. And so for a Tridian customer, also would be an NS1 customer as well, um, they, if they're data center went down or something went down in the Tridian network, they would see a minimal impact because the system's automatically making an intelligent decision to say, let's reroute traffic over here, correct? Exactly. At every level, you know, we're, we're using any casting to make sure that our, our DNS is self-healing and, uh, and extremely fast. And then behind the scenes here, um, you know, we're reacting in real time to make sure that, um, you know, even if they manage to make a request before we notice that this is down, um, you know, five seconds later when their browser retries, this will have automatically self-healed. Excellent. Yeah, and, and, and actually I can confirm it. We are using it a lot, and uh, yeah, and the monitoring system, actually many times NS1 actually literally saved us from, from this kind of failure. Uh, that's great to hear. <laughs> that's good to hear. We, actually, we actually get some tickets about that, uh, you know, about false alarms that, uh, that, that usually turn out to not be false alarms, and, right. and other monitoring systems yeah. are not picking those up. Excellent. Uh, a lot. You want to shift now and, and let's take a test drive through the uh, walk us through the Tridian portal. And then yes. So yeah. So here we see the Tridian portal. Okay. The, the configuration. I can't show you the the demo because there's no data. It's, it's a demo customer, so I can't see any demo. But here we can see the configuration. Okay. So basically, the parameter we are choosing. A lot of kind of parameters, not all of them related to the DNS. This is like the version of a router. Uh, this is, of course, the DNS provider, which is NS1. Here, here we, we choose like the parameter that we want to use in the DNS. For example, we are using with NS1 an eDNS feature, which allows to resolve the, uh, uh, which allows to resolve the geolocation by the subnet of the, of the, of the end user IP address. Okay. And here we, we, we just deploy the domain, uh, the domain name that the customer is using. And here's the theme that, that we saw. Uh, also, we are choosing the regions and accordingly sending them, sending them by API to uh, NS1 uh, system. So basically, as simple as that. Very simple, works very good. All right. So, so there a lot? I'm sorry? Oh, sorry, I thought we lost you there for a second. Um, oh. Yeah, so, so 
So can you, can you go into a little, little detail about, I, I know at one point I was in your office and we, uh, we went through and, and did like a little test drive and tested some file uploads uh, against one another. Can you kind of walk us through what that, you know, what was going on in the back end um, of the system to allow the Tridian file upload to go so much faster than the, the you know, non-Tridian file uploads that you were testing against? Yeah, so if, if we can show, if we, yeah, yeah, presentation. So if we take a look at the presentation, it simulates the way that we are working, okay? So basically, basically if you take a look on a regular internet uh, traffic, okay? Once you're using a regular internet traffic, the routing is usually based on your internet service providing routing, okay? Which usually takes you to the place where the the, the service provider uh, pay less. Okay, it, it, the, the routing is based on cost most of the time. Okay, so basically what we did is we we built an overlay network uh, that uh, uh, that is is working uh, through a software router that we developed. We deployed all of these routers on on cloud uh, uh, on cloud providers such as Amazon Software, Digital Ocean. Microsoft and, and some more NDP and some more and, uh, and basically uh, we have a system that is measuring the performance between these routers okay all, all the time and, and the system is telling uh, is telling which would be the best route from point A which is which could be the end user to point B which could be the, the customer data our customer data center okay and by that, it, it gives him, uh, it allows him to uh, to go over the internet on the best possible route. Okay, we use some some unique technique uh, uh, to connect between the routers, uh, and this is basically the way that we are working. Okay, the DNS here, uh, the the I mean, the, the play for the DNS here is that the DNS we are using NS1 uh, uh, to geo resolve. And we get the user to to the nearest endpoint. Okay, if a user is in APAC, we want to go to to bring him to an endpoint in APAC. And if he will be in uh, California, we will want to bring him to an endpoint in California. Same goes for the rest of the world. Uh, basically, by that we are usually uh, improving the improving the performance uh, uh, by uh, 10 to 20 times. Okay, it depends of course on the location as, as far as you go. The improvements will be will be better, um, uh, and that's basically it. Currently, we are we are focusing. We have some very large uh, cloud storage provider uh, that are using our network, uh, and and yes, and we are seeing the, the same amount of uh, performance improvement uh, uh, for these customers. The system is running for about eight months uh, on GA on general availability on production. Um, basically, that's about it. Fantastic, but I think I think that kind of tells the story, though, that you really leverage NS1 for front of the application performance. Once once we get you through the optimized pop, then that's when your your solution takes over and really drives that across the internet backbone. So it's a really good really exactly. good pairing of, of organizations. Okay. And, I, and there's there's a couple of questions. I know we're getting a little bit towards our our end time here. Uh, you know, one question is is how tightly integrated is this with your, um, you know, the, the trading application with NS1? Do you guys really just pound the APIs and integrate those things really tightly to to automate these processes so that it's really just a fully automated solution, basically one application? So it's a fully the region is a fully automated solution. Okay, uh, we ro the, the integration with NS1 is based on NS1 uh, API. We also have an API to our cloud uh, server providers. So basically, the system is fully automated. Once we deploy a network, okay, we have an API to each provider. If it's a, a server provider or if it's a, a NS1, the DNS provider. And uh, basically, what we are doing is we are just uh, uh, putting the input into the into the API, okay, into the into the management system. And it just sends the, the request and the, and the, and the input to the, to the uh, provider. Uh, the, the network is very dynamic. We have changes like based on sometimes on minutes, sometimes on hours. Okay, so it means that we need to deploy a server or, or, to, uh, or to deploy more servers. Once we deploy a server, 
it means that we need to go to the DNS provider and we need to tell the DNS provider, hey, DNS provider, we have a new IP address. Okay? So all of the things that I mentioned, they are, they are, they are done automatically. Okay? Uh, all is doing by our system, our management system, we call it TMS. TMS stands for the region management system. Uh, and everything is doing automatically. Okay, for example, I talked about scale up, but we also have some time for scale down or, or failure. Okay, for example, if we have a failure in a TCR, in a router, okay, we need to, to respond fast because otherwise our end user will have a timeout. Okay, so when a router has a failure, it sends a command, uh, our management system, it sends it send an input to our management system telling them he has some kind of failure, or the manage, uh, management system can't connect to him. But then, uh, uh, very quickly, the management system should tell the should tell NS1 to to disable this IP address. Otherwise, our customer will go to to a dead IP address. Okay, so all these things are going in the background and are are, are working very fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And, and folks, feel free to ask questions. On, you've got the GoToWebinar application or app there uh, on your screen. If you go to the questions section, we'll, we'll try to answer any questions you have. There's, there's one more question here. Um, so what makes Teridian's routing so much better than, say, a Tier 1 carrier? And, and how does that help sort of, how are you going beyond what you know, GP, GPG would, would, would normally, uh, BGP would normally allow? I'm sorry, what was the question to me? Sorry. Yeah, so what, what, what is it about uh, Teridian that makes uh, your solution better than, say, like a tier one uh, carrier? Okay, so b basically uh, what makes our solution better is, is our agility, okay? Um, uh, we are the only uh, provider, okay, that can deploy a router Okay, a software out there, like literally every place around the world. Okay, so if you go to to a regular carrier, you can you can uh, you can deploy a router in a, in a physical box. Okay, uh, but we because because the region is, is a cloud-based solution, we can literally deploy a cloud a, a router uh, wherever we want, even in your office. Okay. And, and that makes us better because we can find we can find the, the best route from the nearest uh, endpoint uh, to the end user, also uh, from the nearest uh, endpoint to the to the data center. So basically, this is this is our our advantage and this is what different us, differentiates us from from uh, other providers. Okay, we, we I, I can give you an example. We saw a, a customer. Uh, that we improve the route, the route for him, the route for him from Los Angeles to uh, San Francisco. Okay, uh, uh, it was used by using a NS1 latitude and latitude uh, solution, and and by using our system uh, to deploy a router uh, in in Los Angeles and several routers on the way uh, up to San Francisco. Okay, which are which are uh, uh, very close. It's not like San Francisco to New York. So basically, this is our big advantage, and, and this is how we are different from other providers. Fantastic, and, and I think we're we're at a wrap for a quarter till the hour. Um, Eli, I want to thank you for joining us today. John, thanks for joining us today, uh, and I want to thank all of our attendees as well for for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can uh, feel free to contact uh, either myself at jthompson@s1.com or uh, you can contact. Uh, Teridian as well, they have a, a contact us page um, where you can reach them as well if you'd like to learn more about either solution. Uh, again, thank you all for joining us and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.